If you had a chance to watch part one of this four-part series on calorie deficits, you know that a large percentage of weight loss in any traditional long-term calorie deficit is muscle. Uh, anywhere between 20 and as much as 35%, as shown in this clip right here in this study, uh, 20 to 35% is lost via muscle in any weight loss program. You lose 10 pounds on Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, The Zone, The Ornish Diet, then, oh my goodness, as much as three, somewhere between two and three seems to be about the average weight loss from muscle. Oh my God, we can't have that. That is self-sabotage. But what if we eat keto? Have you heard that keto has some protection mechanisms that ketones and ketosis by extension are muscle sparing or protein sparing? Today's research is going to shed some light on that. Hey team, Mike here at After 40 Fitness and After40Fitness.ca. Yeah, the research today, seven studies, seven studies I'm going to share with you showing that this muscle sparing, protein sparing uh, benefit and feature we think that exists in keto, it's there. It's sparing, it's conservationist, but it's not as good as you think it is. Let's deal with that today. If this is your first time to my channel or you haven't yet, please do subscribe. Right, punch that like button for me, like the video, subscribe to the video, share the video. This is one when it comes up in conversation in social media forums and Facebook and someone says, yeah, I don't need to work out. You know, I don't have to worry about muscle loss because I'm in ketosis. Oh my God, you need to share this. By the time I'm done, this avalanche of science you're about to get, you're going to see that's not the case. So we'll focus on that today. But this is one of those videos that it comes up. Uh, please save the link, have it handy, share it. I would appreciate it, the channel would appreciate it. And so would that person if you educate them on something they don't know. If they're repeating dogma and rhetoric, you know, misinformation, you got to correct that. It, it's in, it's almost a responsibility, I think, once you know this correct information that when it comes up and someone says, um, you know, I lost 10 pounds on keto and didn't work out, you need to say, you, it probably two or three of it was muscle. Well, let's get after it. I got seven studies today. Here comes the first one. The first three studies are without exercise. This is just truly a comparison of diet regimens or calorie restricted regimens where one's keto and one isn't. By the way, you're going to see me refer a lot to, um, well, while we call low carb and moderate to high protein, that's up to you, but low carb, we're going to call that keto. So what I see, for example, on the screen, a comparison of isocaloric, very low carb, high fat, I'm going to call that keto. And then by comparison, high carb, low fat. So there are several diet regimens built around the high carb, low fat, but to me, the most common was made popular by Dr. Ornish. Dr. Ornish was a, um, a big fan of fruit and vegetables. Okay. So very high carb, fruit and vegetables, moderate protein, but virtually no fat. His job was to, his diet regimen was to eliminate fat. So when you hear me say keto, you know, I'm thinking low carb, high fat. And when you hear me say Ornish, the exact polar opposite, the opposite of keto is Ornish, which is high carb low fat. So in this particular case, comparison of isocaloric, meaning same calories, equated for calories is iso, all right? Very low carb or keto versus Ornish on body comp and cardiovascular risk. 83 subjects were randomly allocated to one of three, again, isocaloric, equated for, for, um, for calories. Six megajoules, by the way, is another term for calories. And six equates to just about bang on 1,500 calories. So very low carb is, let's go with keto. So you had keto, you had Ornish, and you had one in the middle that had high fat but didn't restrict carbs. All right, let's see what the impact was of these diets over eight weeks. Percent fat mass was not different. And often, um, by the way, this comes up in the forums all the time. People talk about, well, if you drop your, your insulin, then you're automatically going to lose more weight. You know, that sounds great in principle. And guys like Fung, that's all he talks about. Drop your, you know, he, he totally believes in the insulin barometer of everything, of weight loss, of health, of fasting. And yet in studies, in randomized controlled trials, when they compare again keto with, with Ornish, as you're going to see in the next few studies, there isn't really much of a difference. There is not a huge edge regardless of whether insulin is high or low. So have a look here. Percent fat mass was not different between the diets. Keto lost Four and a half kilos, not bad. All right, so for the Americans, remember, double it, nine pounds. The very low fat, which is the Ornish, lost four. So substantial, eight pounds still. And then the mix of the two, the high fat, but with not caring about carbs, lost 4.4. All right, so you can see all in the same genre, all in the same range, minus four for uh, Ornish, minus 4.5, right? Negligible. I bet you were thinking it's going to be like two or three times as much weight loss in the very low carb in the keto. Not the case, just so you know. Calorie restriction rules. In this case, even more so than food, uh, um, the ingredient mix or the macro mix of food. However, here's the gotcha. 
lean mass loss was a third on keto. Oh, all right. Let that sink in for a second. By the way, the high fat without caring about carbs lost 21%. And you'll notice that both keto and Ornish both lost almost a third. So no different than what I showed you already. That standard uh, calorie regimen, calorie res restriction resulted in somewhere between 25 and 35, depending on the weight, the obesity of the person. This is no different. In this example here, lean mass loss, lean mass was a third of their loss. A 2.6% drop in lean mass for the keto group versus 2.1. We did the worst of the three regimens. Isn't that bizarre? So when you hear about muscle sparing, you got to question that. Where'd that come from? Where'd that dogma and rhetoric come from? Who said? Who said there's a muscle sparing impact to ketones? I bet it was Thomas DeLauer. He talks about that shit all the time. Well, I got to send him some science. Uh, Fung too. Fung, uh, Fung Berg and Thomas DeLauer love to talk this and never back it up. Well, here's an example where Keto did the worst when it came to, to lean mass. It is surprising that despite a higher kilojoule intake than prior studies, right? They didn't drop them down to 1,000 or 1,200 calories. This was a modest deficit for many of these women. We still noted greater effect on lean mass loss for the keto pattern. Other authors have argued that by reducing... Pla I mean, they should just wrote fung. Other authors have argued that by reducing plasma insulin levels, a keto diet would spare body protein by minimizing the need for gluconeogenesis. Although we and others did observe greater reductions in fasting and postprandial insulin, they saw it. They saw a drop in insulin. It's keto. It's got to be a drop in insulin. This was not associated with protein sparing. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. So let that be lesson number one after study number one. Study number two is a, is a trial in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, comparison of a low-fat diet to a, a low-carb diet on weight loss, body comp, et cetera, et cetera, in overweight men and women. So again, low-fat Ornish to low-carb keto, overweight or obese men and women recruited into a trial to compare the effects of low-fat, okay, Ornish, versus keto on weight loss, all right? Both groups of subjects had significant weight loss over the 10 weeks, good, good, hey, almost, almost three, uh, three months, uh, and nearly identical improvements in body weight and fat. Low fat, right, Ornish subjects lost an average of seven kilos, let's call it seven, 6.8, um, and had a decrease in body mass index of 2.2 compared with seven, seven kilos in the low carb keto group. So in this particular case, again, we talked about neck and neck. You cannot say that the fat loss in keto is any better than any other calorie restricted regimen. Yes, it's easier. Yes, we drop insulin. Yes, we improve our satiety. We have less hunger. I find personally, having done every diet on the planet, every regimen, that keto definitely makes it easier to maintain a calorie deficit. But as far as true, true values go of fat loss, it's negligible. 0.2 kilos over 10 weeks, that is insignificant. Okay, that term is going to come up a lot in this, in this um, lecture, by the way, insignificant. All right. Now, the low fat group, the Ornish group, better preserved lean body mass when compared to the keto group. Again, like, did you expect that? I didn't. I didn't. So here's the numbers. Significant losses in fat weight were observed in both. So they both lost a lot of fat. And there it is. The low fat group lost 5.4 kilos of fat, whereas the low carb group, 4.1, they actually beat us out. The low fat group Right, the Ornish group outdid keto for true fat loss. However, a significant decrease in lean mass of two kilos was observed only in subjects on the keto diet. Two kilos only subjects doing keto. I mean, if anything, we got to say that low fat, higher carb is better at preserving muscle. It would appear based on this right there in front of you, better than the low carb diet. All right, study number three, is it sinking in? This is the third one without exercise. So I'm making a point, comparing diet regimens to diet regimens, keto isn't great for, for preserving lean mass. Here's number three, also from the journal Nutrition and Metabolism, comparison of energy restricted, very low carb, ah, yeah, there we go, keto, and low fat, Ornish, on weight loss and body comp, overweight men and women, and uh, energy restricted. So they, these folks are also in a deficit. All right, here we go. Subjects were prescribed two energy restricted minus 500 cows. Perfect. So what they did was in the couple of days prior, they established each of these people's uh, participants' uh, maintenance calories. So if, if you're a woman and you're at 1,900, you ate 1,400. Me at 3,000 calories a day, I ate at 2,500. They maintained in this, in this study period, this intervention, a 500 calorie per day deficit. And you can notice very low carb keto diet 
with a goal to decrease carbs below 10% and induce ketosis and a low fat orange style. Okay, so we'll cover keto and orange again, 15 and 13. So 28 overweight or obese men and women were involved in this study. Absolute resting energy expenditure was decreased with both diets as expected. However, resting energy expenditure expressed relative to body mass was better maintained on the keto diet, but only for men. This graph does a great job of, of showing the difference between the two regimens. So men, you're only looking at red and blue. Red being keto, blue being ornish. Okay, keto being low carb, ornish being high carb. Women, you get the pastel colors. You get the taupe and the teal. Taupe, in your case, being keto and teal being low fat. What you want to look at is the individual of fat mass and lean body mass. I'm really going to focus on those two. So men, you did really well on keto. For men, you can see the drop is about five and a half kilos versus three of pure fat mass. Excellent job. Women, just slightly behind us at, what is that, two and a half by one and a half. Call it that. I don't know, two by, two by one and a half. So low carb did better than low fat, just barely though, right? Again, that's where it comes back to, it's a bit negligible. But look over at lean body mass. So again, men lost, I don't know how to read that exactly, was it two and a half kilos? Two and a half kilos. Men lost two and a half kilos in 12 weeks of, of keto and with a 500 calorie uh, deficit. Not even severe. Again, if I, my, my calories are 3,000, if I eat at 2,500, I do not expect to lose muscle at 2,500. I would have, I would have lost two and a half kilos here. And even, but, but look how much better the Ornish did. Almost no drop at all, but a little bit negligible. Anyway, I'm gonna digress for a second and say these three studies were meant to show a couple of things. They were meant to show that there really isn't a huge muscle sparing impact to diet alone. If you decide to do keto and just keto and not exercise, this is your results. In no diet regimen did we outperform when it came to keeping lean body mass, right? You just need to know that. Like it's, it's, un, uh, it's surprising that we talk about keto being muscle sparing. Uh, I just showed you three studies in a row where it wasn't, but let me ask you something. If you're in my boot camp, if Coach Mike was your keto coach and your boot camp coach, you know what I'd be telling you? You got to do hit. You got to resistance train, right? Isn't that the premise? Don't you always hear from me in every one of my videos? I talk about how you cannot. Here's my favorite phrase: healthy, healthy fat loss requires exercise. I'll say it again: healthy fat loss requires exercise. To me, it's not optional. To me, if you want to lose fat, maximum amount of fat and minimize muscle loss. You need to do two things. There is only two things, a little bit more than normal protein. So if you're, if you're in the 20 to 25% range of your calories coming from protein, up to 30, up to 35. I, I, I aim for 35, I aim for a full third of my calories coming from protein. But second, you gotta spark muscle protein synthesis. You have got to work out. In the next four studies, I'm gonna go through them quickly, but the next four studies show that even with exercise added to a keto regimen, you can reduce muscle loss almost down to zero, but that's as good as it gets. You can't gain. Let me get after it. We'll see what, you'll see what I mean. Study number one is in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition from 2020. Just came out last year. All right, last April. The effects of a keto diet on body comp and strength. And these women train. All right, awesome. These are women you'd see in the gym three, maybe four times a week. Lifting, pushing on machines, lifting some weight, lifting until they can't lift anymore. Well, that's what's required. Let me prove it to you. So 21 strength trained women were randomly assigned to either a non-keto group or a keto group. Perfect, that's what we're talking about. Uh, they measured by DEXA. Strength levels were also using one rep max in back squat and bench press, right? So that's the ultimate test if you want of strength is your one rep max. How much weight, ladies, can you bench press or squat one time? To avoid low energy availability, this was excellent, and consequent changes in menstrual cycle that come with any calorie-restricted regimen. Every day in the forums, you'll see people talking about, hey, I messed up my period, I missed two or three, or it's coming every couple of weeks. I did a whole video on how you know your calories are too low, and one of the studies was uh, looking at the frequency and severity of menstrual symptoms, men menstrual issues. So to avoid that, the participants' intake was set to 40 to 45 uh, calories per kilogram of fat-free mass, higher than usually used in most studies, which was 30. So they didn't drop them down to 30. 30, by the way, lean body mass, 30 grams per kilogram would have them down to 12 or 1300. They didn't do that. They didn't put them into an ultra severe deficit again to, to avoid low energy availability and subsequent changes in menstrual cycle. They didn't drop them down to 12 or 1250. They left them at 1700 to 1750 based on 40 to 45 cows per kilogram of fat-free mass, okay? Just want to draw that illustration and make sure that the math made sense, women, as you listen, that we are talking about 1,700 calories a day 
not a huge deficit, right? Only down about a 15% deficit from their 2000 basal metabolic needs. All right, good. We're on the same page. So let's see the result. They were instructed to consume, well, by the way, good, 30 to 30 to 40 grams of carbs if they're in the, five, in the keto group uh, to, to make sure they were in ketosis and protein uh, a little bit higher than normal at 1.7 grams per kilo. I actually think that's higher than normal. All right. No significant changes in fat-free mass were observed in the keto group. And yet, I want you to get that. This phrase, again, I, I said it was going to come up. No significant changes in fat-free mass were observed in the keto group. And yet, look at the number right after keto group. Minus 0.7. Minus 0.7 kilos. Uh, call that one and a half pounds. Or, or non-keto. But look at their number. Up 0.7. I don't know how you call that non-significant. I mean, oh my God. I, again, I'm blown away. But notice the, next, the finishing sentence is, but absolute changes favored non-keto. Well, no kidding. In absolute changes, they put on one and a half pounds or 0.7 kilos. Well, the keto group in the same deficit didn't put on any, didn't stay neutral, didn't preserve. There was no muscle sparing effect. They lost one and a half pounds of muscle. And that's working out. If you don't lift heavy and you don't get 150 grams a day of protein, what do you think your chances are of maintaining muscle when this group lost a pound and a half? Oh, oh my God. Unbelievable. Findings indicate that a keto diet may help decrease fat mass and maintain fat-free mass after eight weeks of resistance training and train women. And notice that. So maintain, I don't know how you call losing a pound and a half or 0.7 kilos maintaining fat-free mass but they lost, and then it says, but it's suboptimal for increasing fat-free mass. It's suboptimal for adding muscle. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, the other group, the non-keto group, put on one and a half pounds, and this group lost one and a half pounds. Guys, that's a delta of three pounds in eight weeks. Oh, man, I get fired up. Whew, that's substantial. Study number two is in the International Journal of Sports and Exercise Medicine. The title is a low-carb keto diet, so I'm just going to call that keto with six weeks of CrossFit. Now notice what they said. If you read just this title, what would you get? A keto diet combined with six weeks of CrossFit training improves body comp and performance. Well, if you just read that title and you're not like me and you don't like read studies, right? And you don't just go at least get into the, to the abstract and the synopsis and find out what they actually mean. You would take that and go, oh, there you go. The, the keto diet with six weeks of CrossFit fit improves body comp. Well, um, Coach Mike doesn't work that way. Coach Mike reads studies. 27 non-elite CrossFit members uh, that were randomly assigned to a keto diet or a control. The keto diet was instructed to consume ad libitum, so there was no food, by the way. So their goal was to eat keto, but no restrictions were put on how much they ate, just eat to satiety, right? Key phrase. And then they all did four CrossFit training sessions per week for six weeks. CrossFit, that's grueling. You ever done CrossFit? CrossFit's grueling. All right, for six weeks, the low carb group significantly decreased weight, BMI, body fat, and fat mass compared to the, as you would expect. All right, you're cutting out carbs, you're cutting out flour and sugar, all the white shit, okay? You're not drinking pop and soda. So you would expect that they decreased everything. There was no significant difference in lean body mass change between or within groups. Oh yeah? Okay, so this is the image just to show you, again, I don't know how authors get away with that. So as you look at the difference between the control group and the low carb keto, that just look, uh, I just want to draw your attention then to lean body mass. So remember it said there's no significant difference. Well, again, the control group went up a little bit in muscle. Not much. It looks like about a couple of ounces, quarter of a pound. I don't know. But lean body mass dropped again. Eating, I don't know, are they at maintenance? They're eating ad libitum. They're eating to satiety. Okay? They're not counting calories. They're not eating down to 12, 13, 14, 1500 calories, these men and women, and yet they still had a drop in lean body mass. That's the value of reading the fine print. So don't fall for improves body comp if they're going to lose muscle. I mean, overall, the percentages would favor this. So I see why they put improves body comp. But anytime I see a loss of lean mass, oh, I cringe. Ah, anyway. Next study is in nutrition and metabolism. Title is effects of a popular exercise and weight loss program on weight loss, body comp, energy expenditure, and health, obese women. So women, a lot of studies are, are dedicated to you guys today. 161 sedentary and obese Premenopausal women, good. So average age is about 30, oh, it's from 30 to 46. Participate in the study. Participants were weight stable and not in any weight loss program. Okay, so they're obese. They're obese women, they're sedentary, but at least they know roughly how to eat to maintenance because they're weight stable. 
All right, and then they got broken up into, check this out. So six groups. I gotta just paint a picture for you real quick. I'm gonna list them here on the page, on the screen. They were assigned to either just do nothing. No exercise, no diet, you're gonna be our control. Nothing's gonna change for you. The second group is a no diet, but they're gonna have exercise. So change nothing in your menu pattern, but we're gonna throw in three times a week, you're gonna do resistance training. And then one of four different diet plans. Now the diet plans are really cool. They were keto and orange, two were keto. Keto low carb, uh, sorry, low, low protein, keto high protein. Ornish, low protein, Ornish high protein. Okay, so again, they're gonna do nothing, nothing with exercise, and then keto and Ornish, either high or low protein. All right, let's just get to the summary. All groups, except for the, right, except for those that did nothing, uh, experienced significant reductions in waist circumference over 14, 14 weeks, by the way. I mean, that's a good length, that's almost four months. Um, all of them, Participants experience similar but significant reductions in body mass when compared to the other groups. So what you got there is you got the two low carb, high and low protein, as well as the um, low protein, high carb. Okay, so the orange with the low protein and the two, both keto groups experience great losses, super re uh, reductions in body mass. Delta responses indicate that fat loss after 14 weeks was significantly greatest in high protein keto. Okay, followed by low protein keto followed by low protein Ornish. Interesting, okay? So it didn't matter. By the way, I just wanna draw your attention to the numbers. Um, it was greatest, fat loss was greatest in the high protein, and you can see it's minus 5.2. So minus 5.2 kilos, like 11 pounds, was lost on the high protein keto, compared to the low protein keto, which only lost four kilos only, about eight, eight and a half pounds. All right, so for those of you, who, again, who a shoe protein is problematic and you don't wanna to be too high. Nonsense, nonsense. All it'll do is improve your results, okay? But I digress. Uh, I highlighted the high protein, very low carb, high, uh, high protein. I should have just highlighted both of, of the keto, right? So that one at one, minus 1 1.3 and the one below it at low carb with moderate protein, okay? So our typical keto at minus 1.1. So in both of these cases, the fat-free mass loss was the most in keto, the most. So keto wasn't muscle sparing. In fact, in this case, the keto did the worst when it came to fat-free mass. We lost the most. Whether high protein or low, low protein, keto in this example lost the most lean mass. All right, so kind of interesting. Okay, last study in this topic is efficacy of ketogenic diet on body comp during resistance training, and this one's in men. Excellent, 24 healthy men performed an eight-week resistance training program. I'll show you in a second the image of the resistance training. It was four week three days off. Participants were randomly assigned to a keto or non-keto group, and then they had a control group that just did nothing. All right, to guarantee a hyper-energetic condition, a daily intake of 40 calories per kilogram was used in all subjects. All right, so hyper-energetic. So again, think about your energy for the day. Your basal metabolic rate, again, mine being about 3,000 for maintenance. A typical woman, again, being about 1,900, 2,000, I think, for maintenance is, generally speaking, a good number for isocaloric for most women. In this case, they wanted to be above that. They actually wanted every participant in the study to be in a surplus. So again, they went with, with uh, 40 cows per kilogram. Well, 200 pounds for me is 90 kilograms on the dot. So for me, it's easy math. It's 90 times 40 is 3,600. The non, and uh, it also says that non-keto was given a protein intake of two grams per kilo, which is right, so we talked before about they thought that 1.7 was high, no, two. Two is a good number. Well, so did the keto group. And the keto group was given 42 grams of carbs to ensure a ketotic state, and protein intake for them was also two grams per kilo. So for me, again, at 90, do the math in your own head for, for kilograms. For me, at 200 pounds, which is 90 kilos, that's 180 grams a day of protein. Ad libitum meal timing and frequency throughout the day was allowed to improve adherence, so they could eat at will. Okay, there's their workouts. You can see upper body, lower body. So day one, day two, upper body, lower body. Day three was rest, upper body, lower body, and rest. So this is a typical exercise. This is a, kind of a really good takeaway for you. If you're thinking about, hey, I should start exercising, this is it. This is what you want to do. Upper body, lower body, each twice a week. You get three days of rest, and you can really give yourself a good workout, spark some muscle protein synthesis. No significant increases were observed in total body weight. Now that blew me away. By the way, and muscle mass. So uh, in the keto group, so no significant increases were observed in total body weight. I, I would have put weight on. I, I don't know how they did that because I would have put weight on in this group. However, notice and muscle mass minus 0.01. Uh, that kind of blew me away. I didn't expect to see 
keto lose anything. They're hyper energetic. They're hyper caloric. I'm eating in a surplus and I'm working out four times a week for 12 weeks and I, I didn't put on any, any muscle. That sucks. I don't mind telling you, that sucks. I was not impressed with that. The non-keto group showed increases in these parameters. They went up 0.9 kilos, right? Call it one kilo is two pounds. So this group, the non-keto group put on two pounds and 1.3, call that 2.6, 2.7 pounds of muscle. And how did the keto group do the exact same workout, eating ad libitum, eating into a surplus? How did the keto group? Well, if the non-keto group did 1.3 minus 0.1. So the purpose of these seven studies and this 20 minutes was just to give you something to think about. That if you think that you can do keto and not work out, even working out in a long-term calorie diet deficit where keto is your regimen doesn't even guarantee you're going to keep every bit of muscle you got. All right, so take that with a grain of salt, but it is what it is. Seven studies in a row where the keto group either didn't completely preserve or lost muscle mass. All right, that's it for, for number two. Again, if you haven't had a chance, hit the subscribe or hit the like button. Grab this link. This is one you want to save and share, as we talked about. If anybody talks about exercising, not exercising, while doing keto Atkins low carb, set them straight. Send them listen this video and let me spank them for you. That is so unhealthy. Again, what's my favorite phrase? Healthy fat loss requires exercise. There's no other way around it. You do not want 20 or 30%, as we showed in the very first video, of your uh, weight loss coming from muscle. Oh my God, that is the worst possible recipe you could ever, ever prescribe. Recipe, do you, do you prescribe recipes? You get it. Okay, now on to part three. And part three is what if I'm a faster? What about that, Mike, that growth hormone and IGF that kicks in when I'm fasting? I'll see you in the next one.